Welcome back to the Stationer's Europa Survival Guide and I'm your host Gromforx and in previous episode we have built this gas mixer but due to the storm we never got a chance to test it actually so today we'll be first doing that the test okay all of the canisters are empty and we have two ice crushers the only thing that I did off the camera is I basically spray painted them to know which one is which so that I know how to do a mix and the mix is input 166% input 2 34% which would basically mean 66% volatiles 33% or 34% oxides by the way guys this is recorded in the batch with the previous episode so um, I've gotten a lot of your comments on the suggestions on how to improve this setup and I will do that. Thank you very much for your comments. Keep them coming. Uh, and thank especially to the my viewers who pointed out that despite in my water setup that the gas will be accumulating there, well, that would have been a nasty boom. So I will take care of it in the future episodes, but not in this one. This one was recorded together with the others. Anyway... Here is a typical example of a dumbass, or yours truly, trying to check up uh, the tank con or canister contents with a network analyzer. Yes, I need an Atmos analyzer for that. Oh look, and our lander is still there. Ho oh, ho, which means after I've, um, after I've tested that this uh, gas mixer works i'm gonna be dismantling the crap out of it i mean we've already had two storms or something and i don't think i didn't expect it would survive but it did which means uh, i've picked up most of the things but i don't think i've picked up all the food so i'm actually gonna do that however i just need to uh, leave these things here the the spray paints, the portable tack, a couple of extra things that I have had here and there. There we go. Speaking of which, where is my Atmos analyzer? Because I do want to test out the content if uh, the gas mixing is good enough for the welder. Remember, this is not a permanent setup. This is just a temporary thing until we that, that we can survive because my reserves of uh, the fuel were getting dangerously low in terms of that i wouldn't be able to weld soon enough so i had to you know do the engineer stuff improvise or how they call it in space flight macgyver the shit out of it so basically yes and let's see so here we have four 0.54 megapascals of hydrogen. Good. Here. Let's do some gas mixing. Turn it on and we get, well, yeah, as you guys said, there is some nitrogen that's being filled in, but um, so the, the, the gas mix is increasing and it is actually 66% hydrogen and 31% oxygen. So it's not exactly 100%, but um, yeah, I would need to filter out the nitrogen out of the system, definitely. But let's just see if this mix is good enough for the welder. I think it will be. Let's just jetpack in and let's try to weld something at least, just to see that it's working. By the way, yeah, I've gotten also your comments regarding the strobe light. I mean, uh, if you guys have epilepsy, don't watch this episode or at least not what I'm entering. However, uh, I will be removing that light from the next episode. Promise. Uh, all right. So, as you can tell, we have our auto lathe and we have some steel sheets. So I just wanted to check if my welder would work correctly. We have the tank, 
Now give me the welder. There we go. And let's try and replace the tank. You see, I have only 1000 or 1300 or something kilopascal. Let's try to weld this. Haha, -ha, what do you know? Apparently, yes, we can. Good. Which means that this fuel mixture is good enough for the time being. Whether or not it will remain to be like that, I don't know. However, we can just stick it in there and hope it works. I'm going to be placing the canister over there because I first want to utilize everything else that I had in my initial canister. And then I should probably be printing lockers because I want to take everything out of the lander, including dismantling the lander and all that jazz. So that would be one. And look at how the batteries are almost full. That's really nice. The storm really did a number on filling up our batteries. Okay, that's two kit lockers, which is enough to create one large locker, which I'm gonna be placing somewhere around Nya. Good. Also guys, uh, for those of you that uh, knew, I'm actually gonna, this might be a little bit longer episode, but I'm gonna provide timestamps, which means in today's episode, we will be emptying up the lander. We will be building a beacon. I'm gonna show you how to make solder and I'm gonna, yeah. We're already showing you how to the gas mixer is set up, so. Yeah, let's change the batteries. After what, we will go and hopefully grab the rest. Oh, an angle grinder is useful for grinding down, you know, the lo the slargo cargo crates. So I want to do that as well. Okay, let's get out. Or do we really want it to pressurize? Didn't think so. Okay, so now let's go to the lander. As far as I recall, it was around, wait, if this is my heading is 175, it should be around heading between 10 and 20, roughly. Somewhere after this, there it is. So let's pick up the rest of the stuff and uh, bring it up to our base. You know, just load up everything and that's it. I probably am gonna skip that part of the video, by the way, in case you were wondering. I don't want to really bug you with, like, as I go back and forth and bring all the goodies. So, yeah. Here is me just dumping out the final of the transport, you know, shipments, so. After that is done, then we can actually, oh, we have a filter issue. We should probably replace the carbon filter. We have enough of them, but still. There we go. That makes everything better. Now the batteries are full. So should I probably go mining or should I go be welding? I also want, I have a couple of episodes, you know, tasks. I want to fully weld up this room so that we are finally in a controlled seal environment. And I have the beacon and I have, uh, well, a little bit of refactoring to do, but nothing too major. So let's take this lump of coal, shove it there in the generator and hope that nobody comes asking for it. All right, the battery charger. Yes, let's replace the battery. And I think we should, let's, let's just look up what do we need to mine. We will be going for the mining trip and I want to know for a solder 
I need what? Iron and lead. Okay, fair enough. So iron and lead. I mean, iron is pretty plentiful. Lead, I don't think it's that easily obtainable, but I have a rough idea where to go. But before I go, I actually want to be showing you guys the beacon functionality. You could, in theory, you know, have a beacon. Set it here, you put it the power on, and then you would be using the your data pad tracker, you would be able to find your way back to the beacon. <coughs> so, there we go, the tracker is set in, let's turn on the beacon and let's go mining. And for today's episode I plan to mine, I'll probably also skip until i have almost done. I plan to first and go for the iron. Uh, then also for the coal because I want to make a new batch of steel. I'm almost out of it and I want to make uh, I want to mine gold volatiles and lead if I can find it and Here we are a couple of hours later after we're done and collected well a good chunk sizable chunk of everything that I we wanted we are wrapping it up to just uncover a bit more of minerals when we come out so that we know where to look for them if we decide to mine them. And they are pretty close to our base, so that's kind of nice. Close, but not too, too close. Yes. All right. So let's just go up. Now left or right? Where's my tablet? It says left. Okay, so here's how you use a tracking beacon. Ideally when you're not too close to the station. Now, let's see, it's pointing the right way. Oh, now we see it. Okay, good enough. There we go, beautiful. Let's cycle to the interior. It's kind of cold-ish. Minus 149 degrees centigrade. I don't know. Sounds like... Oh, well, feels homey. What can I tell you? Okay, the pressure being now sucked into the airlock from the inside. Tracking beacon. Tracking size, that sounds good. Alright, and I was thinking that we should probably smelt something. Uh, copper would be a good idea. Yes, and actually now I'm thinking I'm gonna wanna create a portable light because everywhere I go, uh, I want to be carrying a good enough light source so that I can work. And this light source that I have on a headlamp, as you can see, it has a little bit of cone in front of it. It's not really distributing the light nice and evenly as I would like it. So that one, and I need the battery. I just put it down gently. All right. So let's do the gold. All right, portable light, battery in. And now if we place you, you should be lighting the way for us. Stand up and light. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm gonna be placing it right in the middle. So
okay so I now I think I will be <coughs> wanting to take care of the furnace move it a little bit so that I can better see it from the window and then I will be looking into ways how to smelt solder Yeah, let's go out and I want to be building this section because every time going here I fall down. It's no longer even fun. So a couple more blocks extended outside so I can go around it. There you go. Maybe one slot over there and maybe a couple of more here all right let's weld it up this one of ones will weld only once because there's no point of welding them twice they don't need to be airtight So, time to move the furnace, I guess. Oh, right. And I could build two more of them because those are the places that we miss. All right. So let's pack up the tools and let's now deconstruct this sucker, shall we? wrench oh i need angle grinder okay angle grinder it is welding crowbar required for the construction okay where's my trusty crowbar there we go okay so furnace let's see where do we put it i want to be watching to it from this window so it's not like that that would be is back towards us Right, uh, yeah, I want this orientation. I want it just a little bit closer, just a smidge. Yeah, okay, okay, that looks better. I don't want to get it too close because then we will not be able to pass between them. Welding torch into iron sheets, sure. There we go. Direct view, beautiful. Because I'm thinking I will be operating this furnace remotely, probably from a panel that will be inside. But for the time being, I just want to see that it's tested and I know that you need a fuel mixer if you want to, you know, be able to weld and whatnot. So there we are. And let's just take out some of the things that we don't need at the moment. All right, that's a steel frame. A couple more just to be on the safe side. There we go, more steel sheets.
Okay, we needed one passive vent because we need to be able to vent out stuff from the furnace, obviously. So where's my mining belt? And in the mining belt I want to have, I already have volatiles and oxide. So what I need now is good ratios of iron, copper and lead. Okay, or lead we need and iron. So we got 26 iron, then I want 26 lead because solar is being mixed at a one towards one ratio. So, yeah. Right. 26 and 26. Yeah. Now we're good. Okay, pipes, we take that pipe, then we take it down. Let's just gonna hook it up to the out port of the furnace and create a valve and a pressure gas release. So we turn this guy around, then we put a valve, regular, not digital. And then we realize that we have nowhere to put the exhaust because we don't have more pipes. In which case I decided just to wing it and basically use yeah, hunger and temperature caution. So let's wrap it up with a pipe. Oh, don't float. Yes. I'm going to clamp this guy on straight. Then we get a steel frame and then we have the vent. All right, power critical. Let's take care of the hunger first, shall we? There we go. Chamber is zero, zero pressure, which is great. And when we start smelting, it will go up, of course. By now what I want to do, I want to replace the battery. Well, duh, obviously. There we go. I wouldn't be too long if I was you, buddy. Now, let's see. Of the 48, we'll just take six and then three oxides, I think. Oh, whooshing sounds meaning the night is coming. All right. So better to wrap, wrap up my shops and get the hell out of here and into the uh, safety of the shelter. Let's hit the ignition and oh, it managed to heat up. We have to check how much 9.6 kilo megapascal and 1080 degrees Celsius. All right, so these two are melting inside and when they get ready, I'll get hopefully an, you know, a present from them. 
there we go and I think it's it stopped when in terms of uh, picking up new things it opened up its mouth so we could take you know my trusty slippers all right so we're gonna dump everything that can survive the re-entry in our inventories while when it comes to everything else they're just gonna get flung around all right so yeah iron and lead but it has very low temperature ceiling so we might want to be careful about that I mean it will take a little bit of venting just to get it right but early game this is actually quite a good setup guys you don't need to mix anything you just dump stuff in and hope you get the right one Okay, let's, you know, disassemble these two sections. Okay, let's deconstruct because we'll, the G, being the genius that we are, we have connected it to the input of the furnace, not the output of the furnace. There we go. All right, 2.21 megapascal. Temperature is still a bit high. All right, so one more final task that I have now that we have solder. I'm thinking the solder is needed to create a beacon and that's super handy especially if in the storms or somewhere else that basically when you have a beacon you can always take your tracker and it will show you where you need to go despite if it even if it moves a little bit you can still track it using the tracker beacon so let's just weld up these two good Let's just clear out this debris. There we go. The temperature, the pressure is good. The temperature is a little bit fiddly. Okay, let's get inside. So I think it will be time sooner rather than later that we extend these power lines because we want to get more light. I may be even, you know, skipping that part. We'll see how long it takes. Let's see if we can get this to collaborate. Remember, we still haven't placed the solder. So now we have placed the mix and there we got a solder. Beautiful. So the furnace has to be you know, hot enough to produce steel and then after it cools down, you can still make a solder in it. Wonderful. Okay, 
and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna construct a battery sorry not battery beacon because I don't want to be relying on the beacon that's battery operated what happens if you know if it gets cold what happens if the battery charge runs out and whatnot so I actually prefer you know having my own kit beacon if need be and then it would be working fine however okay let's take out the stuff I don't need and let's build the beacon Okay, and this would be, I think, the ideal place to place a beacon. Hook it up. And note, this is actually a permanent beacon. So once you place it, you put it to power, it will drain your batteries quite quickly. So be a little bit careful here. It has an increased power consumption, I mean, regardless, especially when it's on. So you might even want to consider it off when you're basically close to your base, I guess. Right. Let's close this up. And this up. Well, I think we should probably wrap it up for the, today's episode. Let me just put stuff back in. Take it, then we take a screeny of the beacon and we will be done, I guess. Sorry for it's a, it's a little bit longer than expected. I didn't expect it to go with this format, but I'll try to make it as concise as possible. So there you have it, a beacon, great screenshot. And as always, guys, like if you like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.